What you're looking at right now on your screen is the Spring Initializer website. In this website, you can use it to just bootstrap any Spring Boot application. Uh, so if you go to start.spring.io, you will land on that website. And all we have to do is to just, you know, specify the information that we want for our project. And then we can just click on generate at the bottom. So here you can see this is a Maven project. So I'm going to keep this selected. You can do a Gradle project if you want. It's just a different build tool, but at the end of the day, it's going to do the same thing. I'm going to be using Java as a programming language. Spring Boot 2.31 is fine with me. Uh, so I'm going to keep all of this uh, default here. So in the group ID, I'm going to do tech that get arrays. So this is usually like the domain of the organization reverse. So you can see like usually it's come, but my domain is tech. So it would be like com dot and then the actual domain. So I'm going to do tech that get arrays. And that's what you usually have here as your um, group ID. And then artifact ID, I'm just going to give the name. So employee manager, which is going to be the same for the name of the application. And in here, I'm just going to say employee manager uh, app. And I want this to be, well, yeah, that looks right. So the package, you can change that as well, but I'm just going to keep uh, whatever is generated for me. And our package is going to be a jar, which means whenever we package the application to be deployed, it's going to be a Java archive file, which is what the jar is. Um, and then we're going to do um, Java 8 version. So you can do Java 11 um, or Java 14. It doesn't really matter. Just don't do anything below 8. Now let's look at some of the dependency that we can get. So here, this is going to be a web application. So I need the web dependency. So I'm going to click on add dependencies and I'm just going to type web and you have spring web come up. Um, another dependency that I need is the dependency for the JPA repository. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. And that's just Java Persistence API. So we need to have a way to map like class. So we, we're going to be mapping this employee class to a database. So uh, let's do JPA and that's going to bring us Spring Data JPA. And we need a way to connect to the database and we need a MySQL connector, which is going to be another dependency. So I'm going to do MySQL and that's going to bring us the driver that we need to connect to a MySQL database. You can add more dependencies as you want. You can click on explore right here just to see what the pom file is going to look like. So you can see all the information is entered in here and here is our version. Um, we have the JPA here, web and then MySQL connector here just so we can connect to the database. So you see what you're going to get whenever you, um, you know, download the file and you can see all the plugins and stuff. This is just coming in by default. So I'm going to close that. And then at this point, we're ready to generate the application. So I'm just going to click on this button and then generate the application. And as you can see here, it's being downloaded as a zip file and it's already downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and unzip this and then I'm going to open it in the IDE. Right now I'm in my Windows Explorer, as you can see in my download inside the employee manager, which I unsaved earlier. And now I have all the files that were generated for me. So I'm just going to double click on this pom.xml file and that's going to open the application with IntelliJ as you can see here. So here's the application. I'm going to close this real quick and let's expand this to see what we have. You can see the, um, all of our package name. And here's the main uh, application class. So I'm going to double click on that. As you can see, it's a simple Spring Boot application um, that we have here.